And now, the LSU Football Fix with Preston Guy, presented by Tiger Bait, starts now. And welcome in, everybody. I'm Preston Guy, your host as always. Joined with me as always is Zach Nagy, beat writer at LSU's Country at SportsIllustrated.com. And joined with us as tonight for the first time is Keelan Moses, the 2025 linebacker commit. Guys, we're really excited to talk to you about LSU's massive recruiting weekend they had, where they had over 20 prospects on campus, tons of of top-notch talent, two of the top five players in the country for 2026. Of course, we got the biggest hype man of them all and possibly the best recruiter at LSU, although he's not on LSU staff officially, but uh, he's certainly doing work like he is. Keelan Moses here with us. Um, So just a reminder, if you enjoy the show, if you're excited to see Keelan Moses play for LSU, smash that like button and subscribe to our channel to help with the uh, analytics, make YouTube push it out there to people. So this interview gets seen from people. Uh, Guys, this will be our second to last show of this season before we take a hiatus um, and come back in August for football season. So make sure to watch this show and next week's show. We'll be doing a show after signing day, after the February signing day, where hopefully we can talk about Terry Busey or I'm sorry, Terry Bussey being added to the class. Uh, before we hop into the interview, I just want to get real quick, pay some bills because this is going to be a little bit of a higher pay pay show. We're going to talk about celebrity theaters, our title sponsor guys. Celebrity theaters is Louisiana's only locally owned and operated uh, theater. They, because they are locally owned and operated, you're guaranteed to see every single time a clean facility, better pricing, superior customer service, and state-of-the-art technology. The Baton Rouge location has an invigorating arcade featuring over 50 games. It's the largest in town. You've got a bar featuring wine, beer, and frozen drinks, and they have oversized leather reclining seats. And of course, don't forget out, they got the Dolby Atmos 3D sound system with locations in Baton Rouge and Rustin. With that being said... I'm sure we've got a lot of people trickling in from the hard to watch women's basketball loss. That's now back to back losses for the women. So let's get to some good news. LSU has got a very high quality linebacker committed in 2025. That is Keelan Moses. Keelan, we were all at you high and could see how excited you were to announce your decision to commit to LSU. I just got to know how long were you keeping that under wraps and how excited were you to let people know about where you're going to college? Uh, honestly, I committed November 30th. So I want to say early mid October. Well, no. Yeah. Kind of recent then it was only a couple weeks you knew mid October. So like I knew around October 25th, I wanted to be a tiger. So yeah. Oh, a full month then. Okay. I'll tell y'all the story. I actually went up there just to um, talk to coach Frank about something. Um, My main question for him and y'all know Frank, I mean, Frank's been there for me for the longest, like ever since my brother's recruitment. So, I mean, I could go in there and talk to him like anytime. Well, not anytime because of course we have dead periods, but like anytime I, I need to, you know, go up there. I'll just go up there. And technically, I look at him as family. So, you know, when I when I went up there, I went over there because, I mean, I was I was kind of in a pickle. You know, I didn't know where I wanted to go and I knew I wanted to commit soon. So I was like, I don't know. I need to start narrowing things down and I want to see where I want to be because I knew this year I want mainly and solely focus on my team. And I didn't want to have any distractions such as going on visits. And I didn't want to be that, you know. I, man, I wanted to be a team person because, you know, there's no I in team. So I want to, you know, strictly be there for my teammates. So I knew I want to commit soon. And, you know, before I committed, I wanted to know some knowledge from, you know, the coaching staff. So, of course, Matt House is gone, but I did have a conversation with him as well as um, Coach Frank. But one of my main questions were, um, why was why was I your guy? Why was I y'all's guy to, you know, get everything settled. I mean, they always expressed to me that I was, you know, their key person, you know, to start it all. And of course, as you guys can see, I, I, I'm, they lived up to that. So uh, he said all the right things and he told me everything I wanted to hear, well, needed to hear. And 
that same day I committed. And, you know, that point on, I kept it a secret until my birthday. Well, I had to find out a date first, and then I kept it a secret until my birthday. And, you know, I guess you could say I kept it a secret for a solid month. Well, so before, you, before I let Zach dive into that, so the coaches knew, like, you were committed to the coaches for a while. It was just – Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was it was actually a public committed. thing. Yeah, before it was a public thing, I was committed to, you know, Coach BK, Coach Frank, all those guys. And even the staff before they got uh, fired, you know, I just was committed to those guys. But, um, yeah, I kept it solid and, and quiet for a whole month. So, yeah. The recruiting process as a whole, like, especially from somebody like you, high caliber guy from the Baton Rouge area, U High is obviously a place where a lot of SEC coaches come in and check things out. Obviously, like, being in Baton Rouge, LSU's the spot, and you've been around the program for so long, but – I guess what other programs were kind of like in your ear and if you had to like kind of sit back and understand like, okay, these were like my top schools. This is, this was the hardest one to pull away from. What was kind of the recruiting process as a whole kind of like just for you? So with that, um, of course you had LSU, but other schools like Texas, um, Florida at the time, uh, who else? Florida state, um, Oregon for sure. You know, Texas A&M, you had, schools like them, like they were all in my ear trying to get me to, you know, experience something different in Oregon for sure. Like when I went up there, it was definitely something different. Like I never experienced before. Like, I'm be honest, that was my first time going outside of Texas, like the West side of Texas. So it was kind of cool, you know, like, of course I've been to El Paso, but like outside of that, I mean, I haven't been any farther than that. So seeing the nature and everything it brings at that university, I mean, it was, it was great up there and they definitely expressed a lot of love for me and just gave me a different, different perspective on things. But of course, nothing's better than home. So, I mean, that's kind of what got me with LSU, you know, being home and just being that hometown guy and bringing in people to believe in the plan as BK stated. Did you kind of know at the end of the day, like you were going to be home, you wanted to do this and you were kind of exploring other options just because like the process is so fun. It's hard to not, want to go out and be wine and dine by all yeah. these top programs. And obviously Dan Lanning's about it. He's an elite recruiter. It, it's pretty safe to say that, but just kind of just getting the chance to experience everything, even though you knew in the back of your mind, like I'm going to be home. Like I want to be here. I want to play here. Yeah. Well, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be so honest. When I first started getting recruited, I didn't want to go to LSU. I didn't, I didn't want to stay home. I wanted to experience life outside of Louisiana because I thought there was bigger and more better things outside of Louisiana. But, uh, you know, back then I was, of course, an eighth grader. You know, I just got my first offer. So things were different. And time went on, you know, uh, I got more, I became more mature and my thoughts became more stronger. And, you know, of course I went to go, you know, other places. But like as time went on, the bonds got stronger and, you know, home started to be the best, best spot to be. You know, I've always thought I'm, lie, I'm not gonna lie, it was a real close race, like a real, real close race. And so you're saying it was Oregon and LSU, like that's what it was. Like that was your top two, like that's what you it was it was Oregon, LSU. Well, it was really top four, Oregon, LSU, and Texas. But the closest were Florida, Texas, and LSU. And that's before Corey came. Corey was at Florida and Coach Bateman was at Florida as well. So, but of course, now Coach Bateman is at Texas AM. And Corey is here. So Florida was completely out of the conversation. So as soon as they made that move, I was like, yeah, it's, it's practically over with for them. But or, uh, Preston, before you get into that real quick, just talking about Corey Raymond and obviously back on staff here at LSU, back in Baton Rouge, he's back in his roots. What makes him such a special recruiter? Because obviously everybody kind of just talks about him and praises him how he is in the recruiting show. But yeah. what is it that makes him and kind of separates him from the rest? Because he's already starting to do some damage and he's only been – you know, yeah, what's yeah, week. so what makes him so different? What separates him from the pack? And, you know, what is it that obviously, like I said, a million times makes him so special? So growing up, watching my older brother get recruited, um, knowing that Coach Corey is my cousin and like being around him. Right. It's, I mean, he's practically the DB guru. Like he's he's put a lot of guys in the NFL. And I know everybody, every recruits biggest thing is, you know, biggest dream is to ultimately get to the league. So, yeah. I mean, he's going to get you there. And of course it's going to be hard. I mean, it's not going to be easy. You got guys like Derek Stingley, Ty Matthew, Patrick Peterson, uh, the list goes on and on. So, I mean, if you want to get coached by like practically 
a god, then I mean, come to LSU because he's done it all and he's seen it all with different types of play styles, different types of guys. So, like, if you want to get to the league and you're a cornerback, safety, rover, I mean, come come to LSU because, I mean, he's that guy when it comes to coaching cornerbacks and just DBs in, in general. I mean, he's he started DBU here. So, I mean, he, it's a lot. And if you want to be a part of that program, I mean, come to LSU. He'll, he'll definitely show you about it. So, I mean, yeah, that's practically who he is. I mean, he's a DB guy, so. He's the architect of DBU. That's what we were all saying. I completely agree. But Preston, sorry, I know. Uh, no, no, no. Not, I, I follow up, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, you know, what I want to know is, so I, I remember asking you on November 30th in the U High basketball court mm-hmm. about if you were committed to LSU as a program or if you were there was a particular coach or staff you were committed to and your answer was no I'm committed to the program and I asked that knowing that there there would probably be some defensive staff shakeups so yeah. to, to follow that up now we've seen those defensive staff shakeups mm-hmm. you brought in Blake Baker they brought in Kevin Peoples they brought in Bo Davis what what is your thought of the new defensive staff we're the best in the country i mean straight like that i mean there's nothing more to say like we're practically the best in the country like having these guys are just nothing but a booster for our recruitment like having blake baker bo davis um kevin peoples Corey raymond these significantly important names like these guys did some damage back then in the football in the football world so i mean it just makes us the best so like i don't think anybody else could compete in my in my eyes so and Blake Baker, have you gotten a chance to meet him? He's going to be your position coach and your coordinator. Yeah, um, that Saturday for uh, the Cajun Cajun Bash, I was in the room with him for about an hour or two. And if they weren't calling for us, we could have possibly stayed in there a little bit longer to, you know, just talk and talk football. Like, that's all we were doing was just, you know, connecting on so many levels of football and getting to know each other once more. Like, I don't know if anybody knows, but he was my first offer. Like, getting there at eighth grade, he was there in 2021. He was coaching me with the Tiger group, like with guys like Trevor Etienne, yeah. Trey, Holly, um, uh, Ro- Ruben Owens. That yeah. guy, uh, I mean, I was going against all those kids. So, I mean, at the time, I was an only eighth grader, so – now wait, in eighth grade, if I remember correctly, you played a lot of, like a running back early. Yeah, I played running back. Were, did, were they recruiting you as a running back and no, linebacker? I was a, I was a linebacker. I was they, a they recruited you as a linebacker. Okay. Yeah, I was strictly a linebacker. So like not having that much experience at linebacker, I mean, being an eighth grader guard and those such superior guys, I mean oh, yeah. of course it was hard. And he always brings up that joke. Well, not a joke, it was a real, a real thing. I told him <laughs> I wanted to uh go back and go against kids my age. And he was like Nah, man, it's it's gonna pay off in the end, and of course it did. They ended up offering me coach him, coach uh, Blake Baker and Coach Ogeron. So, I mean, of course it did work out at the end, but I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty hard guarding those guys. But I stood on, I did what I had to do. So, I mean, yeah. But uh, last Saturday, I was in the room with him, just talking a long time and uh, getting to know him. I mean, he definitely reminds me a lot of Coach Madhouse, person uh, personality wise, which is big because. I had a huge connection with him, uh, Coach Madhouse, and just being around him and his family, I got to meet everybody. So, I mean, knowing knowing that he's gone and knowing that Blake Baker, Blake Baker's a great, you know, replacement in a way. Like, it's just amazing to know that. So, yeah. You kind of talked about Saturday in general at the Cajun Bash. And obviously, I mean, it was a star-studded weekend. You had several top prospects, number one players at their position, top 100, top 250, just top players in general. I guess talk about the weekend, talk about Saturday as a whole, and kind of just being around those guys. And we know what your pitch is, but kind of give it to us a little bit, just just the rundown on Saturday. And obviously it ended with a commitment from, you know, a top cornerback. So talk about the talk about the weekend as a whole for us. So honestly, it was practically pretty fun, you know, getting to spend some time with guys out of state, well, out of city guys like Harlem Berry and out of state guys. Um, you know, getting to talk to guys like Blaine Bradford or Lamar Brown. I mean, I see him every day. So, I mean, that conversation was, I mean, just funny. But uh, getting to see those guys and, you know, spending time with them and getting to see, like, our next our next person, you know, it's, it's pretty cool, you know. It's pretty nice connecting on those guys and, you know, getting them on board of BK's plan. So, you know, spreading his word and being an ambassador of his, you know, is pretty great. And getting a chance to spread the word, you know, is pretty cool too. So 
talking to those guys. It was just really fun, you know. Got to do a lot of dances, the photo shoot, you know, just being around and just having fun, you know, just being kids still. But at the we, I mean, at the end of the day, we got an ultimate goal, which was one of our targets, your boy Antoine. So I mean, I told y'all he was next and he ended up being next. So it's only <laughs> only much more I could do. Well, now that you got him, who you who you pushing for now? Who's next on your list? Devin Harper. Uh, I feel like my main thing is we want to lock down the boot first and then we're going to start getting guys. But of course, Damian Pickett is going to be there tomorrow. So I would try and make it there. Just, you know, get in his ear about what he's thinking about, you know, what LSU is really about and what we're rebuilding here. But um, our next in-state guy is going to be Devin Harper. And for sure, um, out-of-state guy is going to be either Fahim Delane or Damian Pickett. I mean, whichever number one safety chooses yeah. to first so yeah, yeah and, and for those watching he's referring to uh so so damien's his his real name i guess people close to him call him dj pickett is probably what you know him as uh you know he's a florida db he's the number one safety in the country guys for 2025 so a huge prospect coming in town tomorrow my question is when you're talking to guys like that keelan I mean, obviously, everybody around the LSU circle is very familiar with what LSU's class is doing for 2025. Number one quarterback, number one yeah. court running back, number one wide receiver, and a, a very talented core of guys outside of that, like yourself. Yeah. Are, are, are they aware already by the time you talk to these guys about what's going on there? Or yeah, is that something already, you have to make them know? They already know what the business is. Like, it's strictly business here, and we're ready to bring that swagger back, like promise. Like, last year, we, we, definitely lacked, you know, a lot of uh, defensive confidence. You know, we weren't up to par with our defense. And, you know, getting guys like, let's say, Fahim Delane or DJ Pickett or me, for say. I mean, when you see me play, I bring a lot of excitement. And I, I'm what LSU fans would want to watch. You know, I get a sack and I go crazy. You know, like that's what we used to do back in the day. So, you know, I preach that to them. And, you know, talking to guys such as caliber of, um, uh, DJ Pickett, Bryce Underwood, DeCorian Moore. I mean, of course, those guys are high caliber guys and they have a lot of schools in their ear, but I want them to know like we're different here. Like, it's not just, you know, LS being an LSU Tiger. Like, this thing is a for life thing. Like, you join us. I mean, we're going to be here for you like forever. Like, this fan base, your teammates slash brothers, these coaches. I mean, for example, I mean, you got Nick, Nick Brosette. I mean, he was here and now he's working at LSU. So, I mean, you're always going to have a lifeline here at LSU. And I mean, there's a lot of people, a lot of people here for you, not just because you're a player, but like you're a person you decided to come here at LSU. So it's definitely a more of a family when you come here, but when you come here, just have your mind right because we're coming to smash things and win a national championship. And I know we kind of, we hit on the recruiting, we hit on your recruitment as a whole Saturday. We've kind of hit on a bunch of recruiting in general. Talk about yourself, talk about your game and, What's kind of Keelan Moses bringing to this program when he, you know, ultimately laces up his cleats for LSU? Oh, in 2021? Uh, what makes me so excited is that um, my thing is I could potentially start as a freshman. And being that I did that in high school, I made a huge impact. You know, whenever I uh, get on the step on the field, I bring this sort of spare nobody mentality. Like I, I see ball and I go get it. So whenever I make a big play and I go, I, I get you, you're going to know it. Like I'm going to point it out and I'm going to show you who's boss. Like I'm, I'm going to show you that I'm that guy and everybody in the in the nation. I mean, not even just in those stands, in the nation is going to know who I am because I have a unique type of style. Like whenever I go out there, you might think I'm a maniac on some, on some real stuff. So like I go out there with a chip on my shoulder and <laughs> a crown on my hat. You know, I really go out there with everything I have. And, you know, it's just not to hurt you in any way. It's just how I play. So it's not personal. It's just, if you get hit by me, you're going to feel it. You're definitely going to feel it. So with me, you're going to get a real aggressive guy and a guy who doesn't want to lose, who doesn't take losing lightly. You know, I'm doing this to, you know, be you know there what, family, so, you know, you know what he sounds like he's saying, Zach, I think he's trying to say he's got that dog in him. What you think? <laughs> I'm not dead. How much like, people ran with that when you were playing that. Uh, just yeah. right. Like it just, the defense was just playing kind of soft for a little bit uh, during the season and, Preston said that man, and oh, oh my yeah. goodness, social media. Well, right. you know, so so that's something a lot of people caught on to. The reason it went off is because I probably said it for a situation I saw. It was when remember when Jaden Daniels got body slammed in the Florida State game. Uh, I, it's sad that I need to specify which time he got body slammed. I was like, yo, if I'm an offensive lineman and you body slam my quarterback, I'm fighting you. 
I'm taking the. Yeah, field. I mean, definitely, definitely, you're gonna definitely do that. Like you see guys in high school doing that. You know, they take up for their quarterback like yeah. this. You're definitely not wrong, but I mean, when you're sitting there looking at your quarterback, you know, get demolished like that. I mean, you don't take that personal in a way. So, I don't know. You gotta have that mentality. Right. That you don't want nobody touching your quarterback. Like that's your that's your guy, especially people of. Jaden Daniels caliber. I mean, like he's practically a Heisman, so you don't want nobody touching him. Right. Full disclosure. Don't listen to me. Listen to Coach Kelly. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't determine your play time. Whatever Coach Kelly says. Um. All right. So, uh, someone in the chat asked about what your older brother Dylan thought of your commitment to LSU. Did he tell you anything? Uh, actually, the day, but well, the date of it was my birthday. He sent me a long um a long voice message about how things were in Dallas. And his main thing was, you know, <clears throat> do follow your heart, you know, don't do what anybody tells you to do. I mean, of course he went to Alabama and there was a lot that went into that, but um, like I said, he just enjoy it, you know, yeah. make the decision for yourself, you know, like back then he, he had a lot on his shoulders. He was very o- overwhelmed in a way, you know, you're the number one player in the nation from eighth grade to, you know, oh, yeah. junior year. And you have a lot on your shoulders and getting used to that is kind of crazy. So, you know, at times, I mean, of course I'm little, but now that I understand it, I kind of feel bad. I kind of felt bad for him because yeah. he had nobody to talk to. Like in my position, I'm, I'm, I have a great position cause I'm the middle child. So, you know, I could talk to him and get advice about anything, but he didn't have anybody. He was the only one doing it. So, and then another thing is he was like a phenom, like, Oh yeah. Prodigy. Like he was, I remember it very was, vividly as an eighth grader, man. He was the only eighth grader to get a, um, Oh yeah. Only Alabama and LSU were on him. Yeah. The only eighth grader to get an Alabama LSU offer. The only eighth grader to be ranked number one in, uh, all on all platforms. The only eighth grader to be at these top camps, like rivals. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the other one? Uh, Adidas, right. Nike, the opening. Like he was the only eighth grader to do that. And, you know, being an eighth grader and just you know, going through all that is just a lot to be putting on a child. Like this kid is practically thirteen. Mm-hmm. He's thirteen years old. So one thing he told me was to definitely enjoy it and you know, make the decision decision for myself. You know, do the right thing, of course, which is practically stay home. But you know, if he said he said if he could do it all over again, he would. You know. He yeah, kind of, he kind of rushed into the in, into things, and a lot of stuff went into his process. So, him going out to was practical. I wouldn't say a mistake, but I uh, actually talked with my mom, and I said, if the transfer portal ended up being a thing back then, you think he would have transferred? She was like, "Hell yeah! I mean, definitely, definitely," because a lot went into him being at Alabama, and he was practically, you know, depressed in a way, especially after you know the knee injury. So like I said, before we got on air, like he was, I mean, I don't know for sure. Cause I mean, like I said, I was like 13, 12 at the time and I wasn't really paying attention, but you know, after that knee injury, it definitely changed him as a person. So, yeah. I got a couple follow-ups just briefly on that. Um, number one, one thing that has been burning in the pocket of LSU fans, maybe we can get a tiny hint of closure. Do you think, that if Les Miles hadn't gotten fired his senior season, do you think he might have ended up at LSU? Because he was originally committed there. Yes, definitely. If Les Miles never got fired, Dylan would be at LSU and nobody would hate him. I mean, that's just how things would go. I mean, things. I mean, if we go on with that, I mean, he probably wouldn't hurt his knee. He probably would have knew he hurt his knee. I mean, he probably would have knew he's been playing on a hurt knee, so – there's a lot that goes into that, and he practically wouldn't have been, you know, his career has wouldn't have been, you know, ruined in a way because of a strictly business oriented, you know, type of team. So, you know, once you get hurt at Alabama, next man up, you know, they kind of kick you to the curb. That's what I learned. And that's kind of why Alabama wasn't in my my top schools because, you know, I didn't really like that. I didn't like that at all. I didn't like how they treated my older brother. And, you know, they treated him like he was just, you know, a number on the field, not an actual person. And I, I have extreme utmost respect for Coach Saban and how he does things. Because if you want to go there, it's like there in Georgia, like it's strictly business. Like you really got to, you know, get right for the NFL. And like if you really want to do that, then definitely go there. Like you have coaches that will somewhat care about you. But if you're not doing what's good for this team, I mean, well, that team, then you're not important to anybody there. You're just another moving body. So, 
Yeah. Like I said, you touched on everything I wanted. Yeah. Go ahead, Zach. It was a lot that goes into that. But if Les Miles would have definitely stayed, he would be an LSU Tiger. No, no doubt about that. He loved LSU. And my thing is, one thing my mom told me was to never fall in love with a coach, which has been extremely hard for me throughout my recruiting process. But she told me to never fall in love with a coach. And now that I think about it, I know why, because of Dylan's situation. So, yeah. For you, obviously, like you've talked about your brother's impact in the recruiting aspect of things. But just talk about your brother's impact on the field and what you guys like to do, just, you know, non-football related. Just And that's your younger brother, just everybody in general. Just with, with Dylan, I guess, specifically, though, just tell me a little bit about him and what you guys like to do for fun and how he's helped you on the field as well, aside from uh, you know, the recruiting game. Outside of football, I mean, we always were a pretty competitive football, a well, pretty competitive sports family. You know, like we were always on the floor in our rooms playing football, you know, with a little mini styrofoam football. And that was the fun, real good days. I'm not going to lie. I miss those days being in that that house on Sherwood Forest, you know, playing football in upstairs bedroom. And sometimes we would go outside and play basketball. Like if we weren't playing, doing sports, we were – doing something sports related, you know? Yeah. So if we weren't out playing, practicing or anything, we were always doing something. And, you know, if we're not eating, we're probably playing video games, which are sports related. So you know, <laughs> it was pretty fun with him around, but he's in Dallas right now. So, you know, but, you know, having those talks with him, I know you said not to cover the um, recruiting process, but, you know, having those talks with him, you really feel for him, those deep conversations about, you know, how things could be and how things would have been. But I mean, Outside of that, we should be playing video games, you know, just laughing, just having fun, you know, being kids, you know, just brothers in a way. So it was it's pretty fun. And then for you, you're kind of gearing up, you know, senior campaign, yeah. last ride in, uh, in the prep scene. What are you looking forward to? Because I was kind of talking about this to you to you before the, uh, the show started and stuff. But what are some goals that you want to check off? Obviously, state and, and stuff like that. But what are some personal goals for you? Um, what do you want to develop in your game? What's Keelan trying to uh, you know check off the list before he makes it, you know, in the purple and gold? Uh, one of my main things was to end up getting my fifth star. I mean, a lot of people – I actually talked to Jaqueline Roy today, and he said, when you get to college, that doesn't matter. I mean, I understand it doesn't matter when you get to uh, college, but that's just one of my goals, and that's been one of my goals since I started getting ranked, you know, getting ended up getting my fifth star, you know, up in my rankings and showing everybody who's the real number one linebacker in the country. Like, you see how I play and you see the emotion I bring to the game, like, and then I'm versatile too. Like I'm not just an inside linebacker. I could be a running back. I could be a, a receiver. I could be, hell, a quarterback. I could be a safety. I mean, I'm I could do anything you ask me to do. And you have these guys, you know, you know, ranked above me that are just, you know, strictly linebackers. Like I'm an athlete. Like I'm just I'm I'm not just a linebacker. So that's something I want to express to everybody. Well, that was my question. Do you think being like classified as an athlete hurts your overall ranking since you weren't specifically yeah. playing? I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I feel like if I was ranked as a linebacker, I would be the top linebacker in the country. Yeah. But I mean, there's a lot of athletes out there yeah. that that weigh more than either weigh less than me and run faster than me, or you know, just do a lot more things than I just do. So if I was strictly rated as a linebacker, I mean. That would be nice. But, I mean, you can't really blame him because I do everything. You don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, at the same time, you're sitting here saying that you do all these different things. And stuff, so it's hard to blame them for it. Yeah, but, yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. I can't necessarily blame him because, I mean, I'm not strictly a linebacker. So, right. of course, I want to be rated as a linebacker. But at the same time, I do everything. So, another thing is, um, like I said, win district, uh, go 13-0. and 0. Uh, Just be a leader for my team. You know, maintain a lot of leadership. You know, be that guy like, you know, I'm the guy for LSU. I want to maintain being that guy for my team. You know, my team comes first and I want to be, you know, I don't want to be that I type of guy, you know. So I just want to be there for my team and, uh, you know, ultimately accomplish the goal, which is state. So my um, one of my personal goals will be, I say, you know, the tackle record, which is practically hard because I haven't I haven't been playing linebacker at all since. My first time playing linebacker was this year, actually. So it's practically practically going to be pretty hard to break it because, I mean, having a guy like Harry Beach next to you, is, it's insane. Like, what do you need? What do you need to uh, get it? What do you need uh, for the record? Oh, the, uh, we have a school record, a uh, tackle record. It's um, It might be 432 tackles in a 
either career or season. There's no. no way. There's no way that's a season. No, it's a career. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 432 would be bonkers. How many? How many do you have? Do you know? I don't know yet. I don't know. I don't know. So if once I figure that out, I'm definitely going to be in, on track with it because my brother started that record, and yeah. I think when he started it was 382, and it was broken by Jaden Osbury, and he had 400. That's good. 20 something and then harry broke his which is 432 i'm pretty sure i don't know i i lost track of the numbers but def- <laughs> definitely get up close to those uh to those guys because i mean they made a hell of a statement with those with those records so you know at least break run one record at my school before i leave but i mean if not as long as we win state i mean i'm not really worried about it so get your name somewhere right yeah. uh you got another teammate who's trying to get that tackle record obviously lamar brown who like yourself does a little bit of everything he plays offensive yeah. line and defensive line right now yeah. are you trying to bring him with you to lsu you know he is oh yeah of uh, course i mean fifth I'm ranked a, player in the country yeah i'm gonna be i'm gonna definitely be in his ear i mean i know i'm gonna be at lsu for while he's a a senior, senior. A senior. Yeah, yeah, he's one year behind you. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you know, I'm going to definitely be in his ear because he's a guy we definitely want. Like, he's going to be at the, top of our, at the top of our board when he definitely comes. So, I mean, you could have schools like Georgia and Alabama in his ear, but nothing's ever better than home. I'll tell him that. Right. Sure. Like, nothing's ever going to be better than home, and nobody's ever going to take care of you better than, you know, LSU. So, you know, that's one thing I'll – I'll make sure to tell him when it's his time to come around and be part of the fam. But um, he's definitely one of the top guys. I mean, also considering that the top three in the nation are from Louisiana. I mean, we're the 26th class is going to be even better. We're going to have the number one safety, the number one defense alignment, and the number one offensive tackle. So just be ready for that because it's definitely going to be a thing for them as well. Yeah, we were talking a little bit before the show. So the 2024 class, you know, they came out with updated rankings today uh, on on three. LSU has three five stars in that class, and that class is now ranked number three in the country on on three, Mm -hmm. seventh in the composite. Really good looking class there. The 2025 class has, you know, the the aforementioned number one quarterback, number one receiver, number one uh, um, running back and number one safety is going to be on campus tomorrow. So that's a freak show going on there. Um, And then for 2026, you've got three of the top five players in the country, all in the state of Louisiana, man. I mean, (laughs) how, how do you handle that hype show, man? I mean, do you, I guess you just go all into it and tell everybody about it. Right. Yeah. I mean, allow my word to be, used as such strength to you know this program you know like i could talk all in all good about this program but you got to deeply believe in it you know like you got to really love this team like you know guys from louisiana that are the top guys in 2026 like you grew up watching lsu you grew up watching and being a part of you know the family of lsu like there's nothing better than it you know and also knowing that you know they're going to be watching us and what we bring to the table so if we do good i mean that's just going to be even better for the next class because, I mean, we're proving that we're going to be definitely the standard at LSU. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No Obviously, doubt about like it. The 2026 class is something special, but when you're looking at the 2025 class, we know that you're recruiting. We know that you're pushing. We know what you're doing. But the guys that are committed as a whole right now, who are some guys that, you know, you've started to develop really close connections to and guys that you're really looking forward to, like, lacing up with? And aside from, you know, everybody, who are some guys that are sticking out to you and, you know, you're getting some bonds with? Well, for the 2025 class, it would definitely be Harlem Berry because, I mean, we're practically from the same area. So, uh, you know, he's on the other side of the ball, so the practices are going to be, f- like, fun for real. But uh, getting a chance to talk to uh, Decorian Moore and uh, Caden Durham, they were there at the same time when I was there. And this was before I was committed. We were all hanging out at LSU. And getting a chance to just, you know, be close to them. I mean, those guys are pretty cool. And, you know – being from them being from Dallas, Texas, I mean, that's actually, I mean, I don't know much about Dallas, but they make it seem like fun. So, you know, getting a chance to talk to those guys and building relationships with them. I always told Caden that whenever I come, well, whenever you come, he was supposed to commit first. So I told him whenever he come, you know, the practice is going to be lit. Like I'm going to come for you for sure. And then he was like, all right, bet I can make it happen. And, you know, a month or two later he committed. And then he was like, it's your turn. And I was like, yeah, yeah. all right, I got you, bro. I got you. Then, you know, a couple months later I committed. So getting a a chance to talk to him 
and, you know, build a bond with him and Harlem Berry on the offensive side. It's going to be a hectic practice for sure. And, you know, talking trash with DeCorian and how, you know, how good he is, you know, and how fast – we actually had a conversation about track and how fast he was. Like, we we were arguing about it. It was pretty funny. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Like, we was on the table, like, just arguing about it. It was pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. But uh, building relationships like Wait, those, wait, wait. I, I, I need to elaborate on this real quick. Are you trying to argue that you're faster than him? I told him that uh, on the field you can't run for me. <laughs> like, you might be fast, but you can't run for me. So he's got you on the track, but you got him on the yeah, field. Like, of course, he's saying. pretty fast, but like on the field, that's uh, it's a whole different gear. Like you're gonna have to make cuts, or you might not want speed. Yeah, you might not want to cut cut across field because I will be there. So yeah, I wanna. I, I know I got to get you out of here uh, somewhat soon, but uh, I just want to touch on a couple big name guys real quick. I know you could talk all day about dudes. Yeah. So there's probably not a na- name in this class that you haven't at least touched on. Uh, Terry Bussey. He's yeah. going to be – he's the class above you. Five-star, 15th-ranked player in the country. Um, another one of those athlete tags, right? Uh, have you talked with them? What is your vibe on if LSU gets them, and are, um, how hard are you pushing? The last time I talked to him was actually the game, uh, the Texas A&M game. I was actually on a golf cart with him without even knowing it. I looked behind me, and he's behind me. I'm like, oh, that's Terry. And we ended up talking. I was like, you end up coming. He just smiled, and I'm like – all right, I kind of I kind of know what that means. So we just gotta you know push for that and you know really keep that connection going because that was actually before I left. Um, but I mean, just keep keep that connection going because I feel like he he wants to be here. You know, he wants to be at this program. You know, be a part of something great because I mean he's definitely a huge athlete freak. Athlete freak. So you know, can't wait to have him on board. But I really do hope we continue to you know communicate with him, and I'll definitely send him a text. Probably after this to make sure, uh, you know, we're good. So, you know, I hope we end up getting him in a way. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, look, man, we're 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 impacting the recruiting process. All right, last guy I'm gonna ask you about. Uh, I, I think you said you're pretty tight with him. Uh, he crossed the city, Blaine Bradford, class below yeah. you now. He's yeah. uh, the fourth ranked player in the class of 2026. Yeah. Uh, he were you you were there with him this weekend, right? Yeah, 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 I see him. I see him. We actually ended up talking. Uh, him and his uh, teammate Bradley Wright. So um, the thing with him is, we're actually rivals. So like, we don't get a chance yeah. to talk that much because I mean, hmm. it's always you know we actually that a couple of days prior to um, the visit, we actually beat them in the overtime in basketball. We were going crazy about that. So you know, the rivalry is definitely going to be something to look forward to this year. But after I'm gone, it's definitely going to be strictly business to, you know, get him to stay here. But um, before I was uncommitted, we definitely had conversations about um, recruitment. And he was telling me about my visit up to Oregon and he was asking me about stuff. And this is before um, LSU was getting involved with me. Well, I mean, they've been involved, but this is before I was, you know, considering LSU. But, you know, I was just telling him about, you know, exploring his options and stuff like that. But, I mean, if you really think home is the best for you, then stay here. You know, I know you want to take care of your family and be be there for your family and all. So we definitely touch base on that, you know, recruitment. But as I'm committed, there definitely will be more conversations for sure if we're not playing each other. So, you know, that's another thing. Well, I think that's all I got for you, Zach. Did you have anything else before we let him go and, you know, get some homework done and head to 5 a.m. workouts? Yeah, Yeah, my last question was obviously senior year is about to come up. Is your plan to enroll early in this, in uh, January next year? Actually, or- yes, I actually am. I plan to, but my mom wants me to stay and, you know, go through all the homecoming and prom and stuff. And I'm keep telling her, like, I'm literally down the street. Like, I could always come back and, you know, talk to Coach BK. <laughs> mm-hmm. Talk to Coach BK about coming back. But um, my main thing is I want to, you know, that's what I'm doing all this stuff for. You know, I'm not doing these 5 a.m. workouts for nothing. You know, yeah. I want to get my body right and make sure I'm not lacking in anything, you know. I'm doing extra track workouts, making sure my 40 is okay, you know, making sure my speed's up to par. You know, I'm genuinely getting ready for my freshman year of college. You know, this is my last year before, you know, playing just children. Like, next year is practically playing grown men. So, right. you know, I got to get ready for that because I got to get ready for my body to change and a lot of different things. You know, I got to adapt to, you know, waking up in the morning, doing morning workouts. So, you know, that also helps, you know, doing the thing I'm about to go through tomorrow. So, uh, I definitely plan on enrolling early and one of my main goals is to start for sure, you know, 
first first year, freshman year. Like, I mean, I got I have to start, you know, that's one of my things, or at least get a lot of playing time, you know, third downs, being on being on packages and stuff, you know, get my name out there. But, you know, definitely being um playing a pretty main role on the team. So that's one of the main reasons I want to, you know, get out there and you know start early. Cool. Well, you guys, y'all have heard it from him here first, guys. He is in a in just absolute it's eccentric recruiter for the class of 2025. Yeah. You can tell he's very happy to be a part of this class. I yeah. hope you as LSU fans are happy to have him a part of it. Make sure to go give him a follow on his socials as we know in this era of NIL, you know, it helps the athletes to build their influence and get things like that going. Uh, it, it's funny, you know, 10 years ago it was just for clout. Now it's like a business thing for yeah. him. Yeah. So look, his Twitter handle is at underscore Keelan. 1k uh do you have instagram are you active anywhere else where people can follow you my instagram is k3 y l a n n it's basically my name but just a three at the e and uh yeah that's practically it you know my instagram uh instagram and twitter y'all go give him a follow help him get his nil brand rocking and rolling so he can be a happy tiger keelan i appreciate you man you have a great night okay all right sounds good y'all too thank you man that was LSU's electric four-star linebacker, Keelan Moses, a guy who you could tell from, from the first minute was, was absolutely thrilled to be an LSU Tiger. I mean, his birthday announcement, it was pure madness, pandemonium. He pulled a trick on us. He like set us up in front of his cake on one area. And then, like, did, like, his announcement. Like, they sang happy birthday to him at midcourt. So, man, I'm telling you, as the recruiting guys, man, we were freaking out. <laughs> we, we, we were like, what is going on here? So, absolutely excited to have him on the show. I'm so thankful for him coming on. You know, he's he's really busy kid, too, by the way. I mean, waking up early in the morning, as Huey Lipsy says, if you're excited to see J- Keelan Moses as a Tiger, Hit that like button. Also, hit that like button to keep our streak alive. If, if Keelan sticks and commits and signs with LSU, we're four for four this year, people. No, we'd be killing it. That's crazy. We, <laughs> I don't know that Keelan counts because he was already committed sure. before. The, the others were all uncommitted before. In fact, one of them went on to commit to Texas A&M first and then, and then flipped. That's this Dominic McKinley. Um, speaking of Dominic McKinley, did you see the on three uh, ratings updated? came out today and i believe that's the final industry update unless i don't even know what espn does with their recruiting stuff anymore it's it's, it's outdated and out of there sometimes but uh, uh dominic mckinley now a five star in three of the four major services uh and working his way up to the 22nd ranked player in the country there was some talk about you know during the season you know he he didn't have a super stat grabbing season this year there was some talk about maybe you know if he was a fringe five star or not uh no he he, he's well into the five stars very comfortable with that so i want to talk about these recruiting updates i want to talk to y'all more in depth about the kids who were at the cajun bash this weekend and i want to talk to you about two five-star players who will be on campus this week me and zach will break down what's going on there but before i do that i do have to get some ads out of the way i told you i was going to try to be high paced with the ads tonight because it's just a jam-packed show but guys if you're looking behind me you might notice a new piece the kid that kid it's the newest Jordan Spector artwork, guys. And as you can see, it's probably caught your eye during this show. It's going to catch the eye of anybody who's watching. So, guys, if you want to get this piece, you can get 10% off with the promo code TIGERBAIT10 at this website. The website is spectersportsart.com. You can see all the Louisiana pieces at spectersportsart.com backslash the bayou. Guys, this piece behind me, it starts at $50. So it's not like super expensive to get some high quality artwork. Uh, Specter's already in the talks with Jaden and his family to get him a copy of this uh, at their house, whether it be the original or whatever. Uh, they haven't figured all that out, but it, the talks are there. Joe Burrow has his Smoke and Joe piece. Uh, then you've got uh, you know Dylan Cruz, his dad bought the original for that. Guys, you want the art that the athletes are going to have for a for a canvas copy like this one behind me is sixteen twenty. That's only one hundred fifty dollars, guys. It's it's good stuff that'll catch the attention of people. This is the kind of stuff you're going to want. So go check it out. Use the link in the description of this video, 
or just go to SpectreSportsArt.com backslash the Bayou to go check it all out. Guys, he's got now six LSU pieces, including Tiger Stadium. He's got Dylan Cruz, Tommy Tanks. I mean, all sorts of good stuff. It's getting too long to even name all the good pieces he has. This is the best artwork out there. Don't, you know, in, in a world full of chat GPT art, go with Spectre, okay? Um, going to also talk about our title sponsor of the evening, Celebrity Theater Theaters and their weekly specials. Guys, Monday, Senior Savings Day, $5 for all patrons over the age of 55. Tuesday is Bargain Tuesday, discounted movie tickets and concessions for all. Wednesday is College Night, where admission for college students after 5 p.m. is only $5. And Baton Rouge location, of course, has half off arcades all day. And then Thursday at the Baton Rouge location is Thirsty Thursday, where they are doing drink specials. And guys, we got to talk about the team at Koala Insulation, uh, making everything we do possible. The team at Koala Insulation of Baton Rouge are your residential and commercial energy efficiency experts. The approaches Koala provides not only help reduce your energy bills and maintain a more comfortable living environment, but can also help reduce airborne energy. Uh, airborne allergens, water condensation issues, wear and tear on your HVAC system, and even lengthen the life of your roof shingles. The Koala team provides existing homeowners with a doctor's diagnosis of your home energy efficiency standpoint. They can offer several strategies to help you stay more comfortable and save money on energy bills all year long. Koala has the capacity to target, tar tackle large spray foam projects and new home construction, all while being available to help everyday homeowners get some relief in South Louisiana's extreme weather. As an added bonus, most of Koala's projects qualify for federal income tax credits. Give Koala a call today, 225-457-1001, or to schedule your free energy efficiency home assessment. And tell them TigerBait.com sent you, and you'll get 7% off your order. All righty, let's dive back into it. Let's do a deep dive into recruiting. We've got a couple comments here. Great interview. Hey, Kevin, appreciate your comment. Appreciate you for listening. Uh, key for success. Hey, I dig it, man. You, it's like every recruit gets their own hashtag before they commit nowadays. Um, and Reaper, I'll put this one up here because that's probably where we'll start. Bussy's recruitment feels like Perkins. What do y'all think? Um did uh did Keelan's comments on Terry Bussey kind of kind of change your opinion at all today? He was pretty aggressive about it. Not too much, just because you know that recruitment's been such a roller coaster so far. Um, I don't know. I I really think LSU's gonna have to knock it out of the park on Wednesday when he gets in town. But I, I think obviously LSU's playing catch up here, and yeah. it would surprise me if BK gotten you know his face for an in home visit before he signs. On February 9th, I believe, is when he's going to, you know, make his official decision and stuff. But, look, I think you have this visit on Wednesday. I think BK tries to get some face time before National Signing Day, and, and then we work from there. But I, I think you're playing catch up here. And to get him in town again is, is a massive deal. Obviously, he was at Georgia. He's going to be at LSU. And then he's going to get Texas a He's going to see Texas A&M for that final, you know, unofficial visit. So, I, I think LSU's playing catch up here. But, look, nothing's impossible. The recruiting game is, is a tricky one. And I think it was cool that Keelan had a little story of them two uh, – you know, being on the same golf cart and stuff. And it, I, I think if, you know, he gives him a text, gives him a call and, and gives him his pitch, it, it puts LSU in a better position. Um, but they're playing catch up here. And I, I'm intrigued to see how this plays out because yeah. it's going to yeah. be a good one. By the way, you said February 9th. That's the final day of the signing period. Did did I miss, like he put an announcement out that he's going to make it on that day? I believe that's the case. Okay. All right. Because it's February 7th is National Signing Day. So uh, I might have just – I was just was checking the dates there, but yeah, that, that means that he needs as much time as he can possibly get to make this decision. Um, from what I'm understanding, LSU's in the backseat right now. LSU has some work to do. I think, I think Mike Elko has done a really good job um, to, to kind of retain him uh, and keep him as a part of Texas A&M. You know, Texas A&M has hemorrhaged talent both in the portal and recruiting class, and, and Elko's doing as much work as he can do to keep that guy on board. That being said, LSU would really love to have him, especially if he could come in and give any help at DB. Uh, boy, they need the help. Um, so I, I, I think, like you said, LSU's going to have to hit it out of the park on Wednesday to really have a chance to land him because I, I do think LSU is, you know, in the back. Now, now Keelan Moses said he, he gave him that smile and he knows what that means. He, he thinks Terry Bussey wants to be at LSU. 
So uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll see. I, I kind of want to know what Keelan's going to text him. He said he was going to text Terry right after the show. You think he already sent it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell him, hey, send me a screenshot. I'm, I'm going to see if he'll send it to me. <laughs> we'll see on that. Um, But LSU's got another five-star coming this week. What, what a big recruiting week, man. So DJ Pickett, the number one safety in the country out of Florida. This is a guy who he put out his top schools. LSU wasn't even on the radar until Corey Raymond got hired. Uh, What's your read on him, man? Look, he put out his top five schools, and it's obviously a star-studded list. You know, you got Bama, Georgia, Michigan. uh, It goes on and on. So he's he's got a solid top five, and it's the Corey Raymond effect. You know, a lot of people can sit back and say that they might not have been – the most questionable hire could have been bringing Corey Raymond back to Baton Rouge. But, look, he's doing work on the recruiting trail, and it's already showed. you got Antoine committing over the weekend, and now you get DJ Pickett in town on Tuesday for a midweek visit. And – he, he specifically said that it's because of Corey Raymond. You know, they had a relationship together when he was at Florida, and now he's back in uh, he's back in the boot, and he's going to come check out the school, come check out the campus, check out Baton Rouge and see what it's all about. And it, it's a really big visit. So Pickett will be in town on, on Tuesday doing an unofficial visit, and then he'll travel up to Oregon and do a visit over there afterwards. And he's got his top five schools out, and he's also adding, you know, LSU and Oregon in the mix as well. So, you know, it's really kind of like a top seven schools, but he's got a top five, and he's entertaining two others. So – for LSU to get him on campus is a really big deal, and it shows that Corey Raymond has yeah. only been on staff for a couple of weeks, but, man, he's put in work. So big-time visit, and I'm intrigued because, like you said, it's been it's been a busy last couple of weeks, busy last couple of days for this program and to get him on campus and then, you know, bussy the next day. It's, it's big. Well, and, and you mentioned Corey Raymond being the controversial hire, which I, I agree that it was controversial because – no, he got fired. Questionable. In Florida. It was the it questionable. Was, we were doing, it was the question. I wouldn't say controversial. Just you know, kind of the questionable hire because this is right. an all star staff. And if you were just to pick one guy who was maybe well you know, question mark, it might be him. Well, and I was going to ask you about that. If you pick one guy, do you think he's more questionable than Jake Olson? I would say so, just because the last couple of years have been a little bit of a you know a roller coaster ride, and you have somebody like Jake Olson who's a quote unquote up and coming guy, right. a football genius, and he has Blake Baker fall back on because he's so you know fantastic working with safeties, obviously linebackers, but he's really good with safeties too. So I think this is a guy like Corey Raymond, who's a he's a veteran in the game, and he has to kind of quote unquote prove himself again. Yeah. Um, but for Jake Olson, he's just scratching the surface, so it's a small sample size for him. He's like that up and comer, and of course you see the trend in the NFL is, hey, look, take a risk on the bright young up and comer. Well said. And usually it pays dividends, and if it doesn't, you're willing to to pay the consequence of investing in an unproven commodity. I'll say this about Corey Raymond. It's, it's a funny situation because of the coaches hired, he like has the most impressive career resume by a wide. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, no one has more first round draft picks than him. No one has more talent developed. No one has more Thorpe trophy award winners than him. Uh, no one has more national championships than him that they hired on the staff, by the way. Um, no one has recruited more number one defensive backs in the country. I mean, mind you, going into that 2020 season, he had pulled in Derek Stingley Jr. and Elias Ricks back-to-back years. Those were both the number one corner in the country. I mean, no one has that body of work. But that being said, you look at his last four seasons. 2020, he had the last-ranked passing defense in the country. And Every subsequent year, uh, I, I think the highest was like 73rd. It was his highest ranked passing defense. But, you know, it's one of those things of the defense is, hasn't turned out results in his past four seasons. Would you feel better if his past four seasons were elite defenses? Of course you would, right? But at the same time, you know, it's not – defensive back is a funny position. You can't really blame your entire passing defense on just your defensive backfield. You know what I mean? Yeah, I completely agree with that. And obviously the proof's in the product of what he can do on the recruiting trail. But um, to, to get with what you're saying, yeah, I mean, you can't just blame your 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 secondary on the defensive struggles as a whole. Like, yeah, yeah I, I'm just going to say I completely agree with what you're saying. And if you pull in a guy like DJ Pickett, that is someone where you can't just say, oh, well, you know, Derek Stingley Jr. was literally in Baton Rouge. Of course he was going to LSU all along. This is a guy who was not on LSU's radar. Or LSU was not on his radar, I should say. He's on everybody's radar. Yeah. LSU couldn't crack the code. You bring in Corey Raymond, and all of a sudden he's on your campus a couple weeks later. 
That would be massive. Uh, and by the way, LSU has the number one class for 2026. If you pull him in, you've just got an absolute stranglehold on this 2026 class. Like, I don't see any way. I mean, you're going to finish number one by a wide margin. Yeah. I mean, you're I all of a sudden, you, if you pull in the number one safety, the number one receiver, the number one running back, the number one quarterback, who's the number one overall athlete in the country. I mean, you start getting into the territory of can this class be the highest rated of all time? I completely agree. And like you said, like that 2025 class has so much um, just star power. And, and you, you you bring in somebody like Pickett for a visit. It's a big deal. And uh, with Corey Raymond in the fold, he can obviously make an impact in this. But, yeah, obviously, you know, Keelan said first thing first is locking down the state. And that starts with guys like Devin Harper and a bunch of other guys. But lock down the state first, and then you go national. And it looks like they're already starting to try to go national and, and make those type of, you know, relationships already being formed. So uh, to what you were saying, I think it, that 2025 class has the chance to be, you know, program changing and then some. So, yeah, yeah it, it's it's just starting. It's just beginning. And, you know, again, you, you talk about program changing. The 2024 class, by the way, a lot of people thought it was just kind of kind of be an underwhelming class. Um, Brian Kelly, of course, I mean, he did nasty work in state. You let land nine of the top 10 prospects in the class, but, uh, you know, it wasn't a super hot year in the state of Louisiana. And, you know, you bring in some guys, uh, from, from, from all over, you know, none of which were immediately five-star guys. In fact, I remember for a long time, we kept on, remember I was talking about, there's no crown jewel in this class. There's no five. Now you've got five guys. Yeah, I was going to say, boy, did that change. Three guys. We were talking about like the lack of pizzazz, lack of star power and shoot, man, here we are now. Three, five stars. Like you were saying. Three, you got Weston Davis, who is a five-star on, on three only. It's kind of a weird situation where. It's unique. It's unique. you know, it, it, remember Willie um, Willie Allen a few years back where he was a five-star on 247 only and the rest of them had him like in the mid-200s or whatever? Uh, of course, his obviously didn't pan out. Obviously, that rain didn't work, but um, it, it's what it reminds me of. It's just how all the other services have him like in the mid-hundreds or 200, something like that. But uh, hey, on three, put him at number 23 in the country. They're really high on Weston Davis. Uh, by the way, Willie Allen, shout out. Did you know Willie Allen? So he signed with LSU, played a couple years, transferred to Louisiana Tech, did his thing. Did you know he's the offensive line coach at Belleville High School? Is he actually? Yeah, he actually is. So he, <laughs> Bryce Underwood. No, that's that's obviously that's Bryce Underwood's. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. There, there's your little connection. It, it's funny the way I saw Willie Allen on Twitter talking about him. I was like, wait a second. I know this Small name. World. Small world, right? Small world. What, what, I wonder if that was coincidence or if somehow, some way, someone was pulling some strings there. I, I don't know, but all I do know is behind the scenes. Yeah, I, I, I do know Willie Allen tweeted, "You're welcome." Uh, after That's he funny. committed, so I was like, "Ah, uh, I, I like how even though he transferred out of LSU, he obviously still has some love for LSU, even even though it didn't pan out for him." Uh, anyways, moving on. Um, now you've got Dominic McKinley who has worked his way up the, the rankings quite a bit. He was a consensus five-star basically all the way, but he was like 31st, like, like on the edge of being a four-star. Uh, then he balled out at the, uh, Under Armour All-American game. He really turned some heads with his explosiveness in particular is what, uh, surprised people. A lot of scouts were talking about how he plays with leverage. They really liked. So after a relatively quiet season at Acadiana, he really shot his way up. Uh, he's now a five-star on all of the recruiting services except for ESPN uh, and, and a consensus five-star. So, so just firmly a five-star. Uh, and then the guy we were talking about all season long, we actually talked about this last week where he wasn't a five-star on any individual site. But because he was so highly rated on all of them, the consensus rating, which is so wild, weird. To me, but yeah. you know, continue with what you're saying. Obviously. It's just the science behind this. I, I had people talking to me following the trade as green situation, um, where they just were like, "I don't understand." I'm like, "That's why you follow me. Just listen to exactly. what I say. Exactly. Just listen to us talk, and <laughs> that's why you've got us sickos, and we'll explain, but you know, who actually who actually follow these systems that are overly complex, and you know." don't actually mean anything at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Uh, But Hey, look, man, I'm going to just tell you what happened was um, 
The composite is just made of all four of the industry services. He got none of them had him at five stars, but right on the fringe, all three, it was enough to make him the 32nd ranked composite player, which gave him a five star. That was after two, four, seven. Forgive me if I, if I get the order of this wrong updated theirs. And then the next day rivals comes out with theirs and they a Miami commit. They rated so much higher than trade as green. So he got the 32nd spot. Trey Desgree got bumped out to 33. So for 24 hours, he was a five-star, and then he lost it, right? And then people are like, man, they hate LSU. They, 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 you know, it's all rigged. It's stupid. How do you lose a five-star? I mean, it's because it's different services doing different things, and because of the composite ratings, you know, they all go into it. Well, today, on three, updated their rankings, and – on three had trade as green, not only a five star in their composite, but a five star in their ratings. So now he's 31 in the country, which gives him that fifth star. And I think, uh, I, I, he was like 30th on, on three itself. He went from 37th to like the 30th or something Mm -hmm. like that. So it was enough to give him that five star. So now we're talking about three guys who really should make LSU fans happy. And then you've got a chance to, possibly pull in Terry Bussey as well. Um, on three is really high on, on LSU this year, abnormally high. So LSU, of course, has the seventh rated class. On three has them at number three uh, with theirs. The, the composite, of course, is is their rating they do where, where it's all the uh, classes put together. So some, uh, some interesting stuff there. Um, let's see here. Before... Um, try to get to last couple comments. If you guys got a comment or something, go ahead and put it out there. So we'll, we'll try to get to it. I'm going to wrap up with some names who were here this weekend. We're going to kind of go a little rapid fire um, and, and talk about guys just real briefly. Um, talk about who was on campus and stuff like that. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about Alumni Hall. Hey, Tiger fans, when you want to show your LSU pride, Alumni Hall is your ultimate shopping experience, the best and largest selection of apparel for the whole family. Nike, Nike Golf Champion, Columbia, Peter Millar, Southern Tide hats, Yeti gifts, accessories, and more. LSU faculty and students receive and military receive 10% off in-store every day. You can earn cashback rewards with their Hall Pass Rewards program. Alumni Hall located in Perkins Roll or anytime at alumnihall.com. Alumni Hall, where the Tiger fans shop. And of course, guys, we've got Celebrity Theaters here as our title sponsor this year, making everything we do possible. Guys, Celebrity Theater has eight to 10 auditoriums where you can host your private event, whether you're hosting a birthday party, private movie screening, corporate meeting, or arcade party. They've got the perfect facility to fit your needs. Celebrity Theaters is proud to offer birthday packages for children of all ages. Let them handle everything from movies to entertainment to set up to clean up. For more information or to book your birthday party online, visit celebritytheaters.com backslash events. If you're looking for an exciting, affordable venue for your next school event fundraiser, you've come to the right place. Guys, shoot them an email at events at celebritytheaters.com if you're interested in looking into your own private movie screening. <coughs> I understand that Jacob Hester's son is 13 oh years old, gosh. six foot, 200 pound defensive end. What class is he in? My goodness. I have no idea what class. 2030? I don't know. Um, Who cares about the class? 13 yeah. years old at six foot, 200 is absurd. Well, and he's got a good connection to LSU. Now, yeah, all Jacob, he was only a two star recruit, but, you know, one of the, there's a few nuances of the recruiting services I've always hated. Um, number one, why is it that for positions like fullback and kicker, the star ratings are all so low? I understand you don't want them to have the super high impact on your rating, <clears throat> but why is the best kicker in the country a, two, a three-star prospect? You know what I mean? Like, why is every fullback in the country a two-star? Probably just because it's such a underutilized role. Um, just not many teams even have fullbacks anymore. Yeah. Uh, well, and, and it's just always been that. Fun. I just really dislike how that works. Uh, Lyric Livingston wants to know if we're posting the, the girls post game conference. Uh, we are. Um, but 
sometimes when it's on the road, <coughs> we have to hire like a freelancer to go and get the video for us. So it takes a little while to funnel it over. So my, Mike's working on that, no doubt. <coughs> um, yeah, so this weekend, man, LSU picks up a commitment from Jabori Antoine, the cornerback out of uh, New Iberia. Did you see Brandon Harris caused a little bit of a stir? That was amazing. I did see that. So, uh, hey, look, Brandon Harris showed up, former LSU quarterback recruiting for Texas. And the next day he goes to LSU and LSU gets him. So, uh, you know, he caused a little bit of a um, – he upset LSU Twitter a little bit. Uh, I guess we'll put it. But other than him, you had a bunch of committed guys, Harlan Berry, Brett Bordelon, Teron Francis on campus. Devin Harper, the offensive lineman out of Calvary Baptist in Shreveport, was there. I mean, you got to have a good feeling about him, right? I, I think Keelan Moses is right. He'll probably be the next kid to commit to LSU, right? Yeah, I, I think if you're, you know, counting down or not even <laughs> down, but just looking at who could be next, like you said, I think Devin Harper is going to be your guy. Um, yeah. Obviously, LSU is trending right now. And this is one that you want to get done sooner rather than later. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Harper pop sooner rather than later. Yeah. Um, and then for 2026, of course, you bring in Blaine Bride for Lamar Brown, a uh, bunch of guys from all over the state. It was, it was all in-state guys um, for the 2026 class. So if you'd like to see that whole list uh, and check out their bios, it's available at tigerbait.com in the tiger den forum guys i appreciate y'all watching the show tonight i appreciate keelan for coming in if you missed any of the keelan interview because i understood that dude was locked and loaded like he was dialed in ready he was fantastic talk about a great interview um i felt like he was taking me to church you know what i mean like that felt like it got emotional at times Liz, especially hearing him talk about uh, uh, talk about dylan moses i like i was an lsu student during Dylan Moses's recruitment, right? So I was, you know, hardcore dialed into the football team. And I remember following it. I remember being very upset just as a fan uh, to lose such a talented prospect to Alabama. Uh, and to hear Keelan recap how, how that went down and how he's confident, he confirmed what we've been suspecting for years. It was cool. Is he it- just gave like, a completely different perspective, you know, a behind the scenes look, obviously, but just getting a different perspective from him and talking about like, you know, the ins and outs of it all is. It was really interesting to me. I, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, man. Uh, to, to, to hear him just straight up say, yeah, he was going to go to LSU if they hadn't fired Les Miles. That that's awesome. I, I, the, the 20-something-year-old LSU student not working in media at LSU who remembers that just uh, gut, gut, gut just, punch. oh, mm-hmm. man. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it oh, all these years. Uh, and it's really kind of sad hearing him talk about it because he's, he's really basically saying he regrets going to Alabama. And he, he, he followed it up by saying that's why Alabama wasn't on my list of schools at all. Because, you know, exactly. Alabama was interested in him. He wasn't interested yeah. in Alabama at all. Absolutely. That was, that was wild. That was a great perspective. Dude, it's so candid, and it's just so it, – it's funny to me how guarded these recruits always are, like always afraid to say something wrong. Um, I'm not saying Keelan said anything wrong, but it just was remarkably candid. So if you haven't watched it, go back and watch that interview. Just just when this video is available for replay, just go back and watch it. It was, it was a fantastic interview. I'm looking forward to him being a Tiger in LSU. Guys, appreciate you all for watching. Smash that like button because three Fire3449 three, four, four, told you to do it. Okay, He was a little late tonight. He's probably depressed over the women's basketball dropping a game to Mississippi State. That's two straight now. Uh, but hit that like button, okay? Uh, and guys, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're you know approaching some goals that we want to accomplish here. So make sure to get our help us out with our subscribers. We've got one more show for the year. Now I, I set it for Thursday next week, so it's after signing day. I want to make sure to capture that signing day. I may. I may get a little, I may, I might do a little bit of wiggling with it um, to make sure we account for the Terry Bussey decision. Cause I don't want to wrap up saying, okay guys, Terry Bussey may commit tomorrow. I want to kind of wrap up that 2024 season and then move on to the off season where, you know, <clears throat> I won't be doing a weekly show, but I'll still be doing Tiger Bait recruiting updates. Spring ball will be here. I might do a spring ball show with Zach. We did a spring ball show last year. Uh, to see if he he was any good at this. I guess he was good enough to to bring him in as co-host. Um, so yeah, make sure to hit the subscribe button to keep up with all that. Appreciate y'all, and y'all have a wonderful evening. Okay. <laughs>